Hi everyone, it's Nicole and welcome back to my floss tube series. This is floss tube number six and I am so happy to be here today. I am coming to you a little late again. It's been kind of a week. I am so sorry that this is somewhat late. Um, yeah, it was just a week. I had a lot of stuff going on for work. And then the last few days, I have not gotten a full night's sleep. Odin is sick. And of course, by the time I realized it was serious, or somewhat serious, um, he is still drinking and eating a little bit as I let him. Um, but as I realized that, it was weakened. Just like for me, I always equate this to when I had little kids and they never got sick during the doctor's work hours um, or during the work during the week. They always got sick on the weekend. Um, that's what I feel like here. So I've already put in a request with the vet, so I'm sure we'll be going first thing Monday morning. Um, but he has a tummy issue. It causes him to have to go to the bathroom a lot. He has a lot of hair. We're going to leave it there. It's been, it's been miserable for him, and I've just been trying to give him lots of extra cuddles because he's ashamed because I have to use a sprayer outside to clean him up and he doesn't he clearly doesn't feel good he he tries he like he'll get a wild hair every day that he wants to play fetch with his toy um he wanted he wants me to take him for a walk in the mornings and I haven't because I'm afraid to get too far from home and to him to have an accident you know it's a whole thing so <laughs> Anyhow, that's long story short. That's what I've been dealing with. Um, other than that, I didn't get quite as much stitching as I wanted to this week. But I, as I was thinking about this before I came here uh, today, I thought I should really be gentler on myself because I did get quite a bit done. I, I think I have these expectations, but I'm doing this weekly and... I got a lot done for a week, so I'm going to be gentle on myself and just be proud of what I did accomplish, and we'll go from there. So um, that being said, I do want to welcome all of my new subscribers. I know I've heard from quite a few of you that you found me through FlossTube. I love hearing that, so definitely keep leaving me comments. Um, if you found me just by doing a FlossTube search, that's how I find floss tubes as well. Um, and I, I love watching them in my downtime or in my stitching time in the evening. I, I Instead of watching a lot of TV, I watch a lot of floss tubes. So there's that. Or I have it on while I'm stitching or cooking dinner or whatever the case may be. Um, let's see. What else did I have on my little list? I think that's probably about it for weekly recap. Oh, um, my oldest son took me out for dinner Friday night, which was super nice. He took me out for sushi, which we both love. Um, the service was horrible, and we were both disappointed. We've gone there quite. We've gone there several times. He goes there a lot, um, but. I've been with him several times, and he said it's pretty normal, but they were so super busy, but they completely forgot one of our sushi rolls. I mean, they took it right off, so it's nothing like that, but it was just really bad service. I asked for extra napkins. They never came. They never asked if we wanted refills, but here's the funny thing. So we both ordered a drink, and he got carded. He's 23, so he, and he looks young, so he got carded. They carded me, and I was like, oh, bless you. <laughs> I haven't been carded in years. I, I even, I go, are you serious? And he was like, yes. And I was like, oh, okay. And Brendan dies laughing, and I, and something came up, and I was like, well, he's my son. And the guy goes, you're kidding. And Brendan goes, uh, yeah. I think they thought we were on a date, and I felt so bad for my son. <laughs> Anyway, um, so that was a boost to my self-confidence, I suppose. I thought that was a funny story, so I thought I'd share it. He's, and he knows I'm sharing it. I, I share it with his permission because I didn't want him to be embarrassed. Um, but he, he literally thought it was funny, and then he made the gagging and gross noise uh, when the guy walked away. So <laughs> I was like, thanks. And then he just giggled and laughed. But we had a lovely time, and so that was really fun. 
Um, I think I mentioned this in my card making live Friday. My son, my youngest son, is gone for a couple weeks with his dad. They're going on this like epic uh, road trip where they're going to all kinds of different uh, baseball stadiums and they're having a blast. I was a little jealous. I was like, oh my gosh, that sounds so fun. Um, but yeah, he's having a great time. I just messaged with him this morning and so, and reminded him, you know, it was Father's Day to please tell his dad. <laughs> And he was like, Mom, I already told him. I was like, oh, good. Um, but yeah, so anyway, just, I guess that's about it. Um, sick dog, lots of watering my plants, trying to get them not to die in this heat. Um, and that's it. I'm going to move on to Q&A. Uh, I do want to let you know, I am time stamping everything down below. That way you can just get to what you're interested in, um, as always. So my questions this week, I don't have a ton. Um, let's see, Jordy's cards. What's the difference between regular black Ada and chalkboard Ada? So black is going to be pure black. Chalkboard is going to be more of that chalkboard look. Like, I can't even say it's a dark gray. It's definitely black, but it has that faded chalkboard quality to it. I personally like chalkboard black better than black, um, but it's really just a personal preference. Sleepless for way too long. I can't remember whether you already mentioned. Uh, what are your favorite type of needles for cross stitch? She, um, and those are the Bowen B-O-H-I-N 26, size 26 needles. I will link those down below for you guys. In fact, I'll probably just leave it uh, down below with a few like commonly asked for links and things in case you're interested. Um, somebody had mentioned when I had answered this question in another or talked about it in another floss tube video that Pat Carson needles size 26 were supposed to be coming back. And they were, I mean, even Kimberly at Fat Quarter Shop had mentioned it, but I noticed that they have been removed from their website and then Kimberly mentioned it either in her floss tube or, or one of her videos here recently that it doesn't look like they are gonna come back. So my favorite are the Bowen size 26. Um, let's see, Jesse says, I have a question when you say 25 or 32 count, what does that mean? It means to the number of stitches per inch. So um, 32 count is the equivalent. That's usually, 32 count is going to be like a linen or an even weave or a Lugana, something like that. And that's where you're going to stitch like over two, basically skipping a hole. And um, if you want it big, if you want it real teeny tiny, you'll just do one over one over one probably. Um, but it's just going to be little. So 32 count is going to be the equivalent of 16 count like Ada. Um, hopefully, if that makes sense. 28 count is going to be the equivalent of a 14 count Ada. I know when I kind of started back into cross stitch and paying attention, um, I didn't realize that. And so that really helped me because size-wise, that just gives you a better idea. My best um, tip, and I know I've mentioned this a lot, but I truly think this has been a game changer for me. So I really want to encourage everybody else as well. Um, use the cross stitch calculator at that quarter shop. I have it linked down in the description at the bottom of my post with kind of like common like links that people have asked for. If you ask me for the rings that I keep my floss on, or um, like the bow and needles, I'm gonna put that down there, or who I use for quilting, those are gonna be at the bottom, and I'm gonna think, I think I'm just gonna start leaving those down there um, for easy reference, but um, I will link to the cross stitch calculator page at that quarter shop. I think it's an invaluable tool. Um, Margie wants to know how a stitch along works. So I mentioned that I think I somebody wanted to know last week. Would you consider hosting a stitch along? And yes, and I, I'm getting closer to finalizing what I think I'm going to do. And if you want to stitch along with me, awesome. You, there's obviously no obligation. So a stitch along, and I do a lot of stitch alongs like with Fat Quarter Shop, they are where they kind of give you a rough schedule of, there's a lot of different ways to do it, but I'm going to give you a couple. They give you a rough schedule of, this is, we're going to stitch this part of the chart this week or this month, and then we'll do the, ne the next part 
in the next part, either weekly, monthly, it kind of varies. Um, the other way are like mystery stitch alongs, which I do with Fat Quarter Shop or I stitch along with Fat Quarter Shop. And that's where they release a part of the chart weekly or monthly. And that's any of the stitch alongs I've mentioned in the past or that are upcoming that I'm going to participate in. That is what I'm doing. And I hope that answers that. When I do a stitch along, when I host one, it would be the first one I've ever hosted and I'll host it kind of through Floss Tube here. I, and I probably will set up a Facebook page too for that, just so that we can kind of chat and share photos and stuff, things we can't do here through YouTube. Um, I believe right now somebody had said, how about August? And August is probably when I'll do that. So that means here in July, early in July, I will post what I'm going to stitch along. That way, if you want to uh, join in and get your floss and your fabric and the pattern and chart and the chart or whatever you can. Um, and I will talk a lot more about that here probably in about two weeks. I just need to finalize which chart I want to use. I've kind of narrowed it down to two that I have really wanted to stitch, so we'll just see. Um, Jeanette says, do you have extra needles threaded to change colors as you work or do you just work on across the same color and come back to fill in? I don't. Um, I have tried to use multiple needles and I usually just like leave them threaded and have them stuck on a needle minder or in my fabric. I, I don't use needle minders that much. I love them because I think they're cute, but I don't really use them. Um, but uh, yeah, I usually just use one needle and I just switch it out. Here's kind of my rule of thumb. And this is the, this is just how my brain works, I think. I will be stitching a certain color of the chart. Even if the next part of the chart is a different color, I will usually look to see where else that color is used if I haven't used up that whole piece of, or those whole couple of strands of thread. And I will just move on to that section until I completely stitch through whatever's left in my needle, playing needle chicken as I've heard it called, which sometimes I do. I try not to do that because I it never fails. Um, I get somewhere and it comes out and I don't have enough left. If you guys cross stitch, you know, you know what I'm talking about. You try to get the most out of it, but sometimes it doesn't work out. Um, so no, I just use the same needle. Pro there are a few times I will grab another needle, um, but generally it's no more than two. Lisa says, how do you know which cloth to use? So when you choose fa cross stitch fabric, it's completely a personal choice. Usually on the patterns, the designer will give you their recommendation or what they use to stitch the sample on. And you can follow that. I have followed that many, many times. And if you don't want to follow it, like I'll give you one example for me, the Boo Crew stitch along that's coming up at Fat Quarter Shop, which I think the dates have been set. I forgot to print that out. I'll talk about that next week because I don't think it starts until July. Uh, but it was like a purple fabric. I'm not a huge purple decor person. And so I am choosing not to use the recommended fabric that they're using. It's super cute. The sample, the part of the sample they've shown, because it's a mystery stitch along, is cute. It's just really not my thing. So I chose a different fabric. It's completely up to you what you want to use. Um, you can check it out and then use the cross stitch calculator to see how big it's going to be, you just plug in the numbers, uh, the stitch count and the size fabric that you're using and it will tell you how big your finished size will be. Amanda says, do you happen to know if the pattern for the quilt sampler can be purchased without buying the whole book? And that's that Thimble Blossoms uh, book, the quilt sampler that I showed last week and I'll show you my progress from this week and no, um, you have to buy the quilt book to get it. Connie says, do you know what I could use to magnify the work. Um, I don't have one. I've considered buying one in the past and I told her what to buy and I of course think I did not put that in my um, list. Hold on really quick. The Hey Logo. I knew I would find it. I couldn't remember the name. I've heard really good things about the Halo Go magnifier light I think it's a little pricey, but I definitely think it could help. I 
I haven't bought one yet, but my eyes are getting older. Um, I actually had LASIK surgery, oh gosh, you guys, in 2006? No, 2004 or five. I had it before I had Ethan. Um, so a long time ago, and it has been fantastic, but I have noticed in about the last year or so, as it gets dusk and nighttime, I think that I could use it. So I'm thinking that I probably will invest in some sort of magnifying light, especially as, you know, we go into fall and it gets dark earlier. And of course, I like to sit and cross stitch in the evenings. And in the summer months when it's still light outside, I don't know. I just feel like it's a little easier for me. But I definitely think that as we move into fall, I probably will invest in one. Um, and let's see, and I do, I will add a link to the one that I've heard good things about. Judy says, I know you stitch a lot of your projects on Lugana. Did you struggle at first and do you have any tips and tricks to share? Um, I actually haven't struggled on the Lugana. I super struggled on linen. So I actually, um, when I started, I started on Ada. That was long, long time ago. And then a long time ago, I should bring this project up. I know exactly where this project is. I did a birth sampler for only one of my children, my oldest son, and I, I stitched it on linen. It's beautiful. It had beadwork. It was a pattern from Stony Creek, <clears throat> excuse me. And I absolutely love it. Um, I will try, I'm gonna make myself a note um, to bring that for next week because I think it would be fun to show you guys. Um, but the linen, and I'm going to bet it was, it was probably 28 to 32 count. It was one of those. It was, that was kind of my learning curve, I suppose, just because it was, it was tricky. It, it took me a little bit to learn how to stitch on that. Um, I also have my favorite stitch prior to my getting back into stitching is this Santa that I did. Um, I should bring it too, but I stitched him on 14 count Ada and I love him. Um, I would kind of like to revisit and restitch him at some point. And I, if maybe not restitch him, I want to get him reframed um, because it's really old fashioned frame. I feel like it's old fashioned. And I just would like to do something different. Um, I need to look into that. I'll try to bring him up next week too, because I put it out every year. It's probably, that is my very, very favorite. But those are two things that I did in the past that I thought I'd bring up and show you guys. Um, but back to learning. So learning, I learned on that and it was tricky. And then I've stitched several things on linen and I felt like maybe because the linen is not perfect. It's not even weave linen. It, it had the little nubbies and it was kind of hard. I think Lugana is not too bad. So it's 25 count. Um, and to me, I don't find it too super small. But I think if you do, here's a couple of things. If it's too small, maybe try a magnifier. You could even try like magnifier glasses. I, I thought about trying those too. Um, I haven't. Um, but that's one option. Or if you just don't love it after you've given it a try, don't be afraid to just go to something that you like better. There are no rules. You don't have to stitch on a linen or a Lugana or anything like that. I think the goal is to stitch. Um, stitch projects you love on something you can see. Uh, Mrs. Darcy, where did you get the cute red truck? Um, that's the red truck I showed last week. It's Ray Dunn, and I got it at either Marshall's, TJ Maxx, or Home Goods. I wish I could remember which one. I got... I. The day I got it, I got several things and I went around to all of the stores. So I got it at one of those. You just kind of have to hunt them out, but I absolutely love it. I know for sure, I know for sure I saw a white truck with red letters at TJ Maxx. So I'm thinking I didn't get it there, but I think TJ Maxx had them. I want to say I probably got it at Marshall's. And I guess that's it. I do want to talk a little bit. I know a lot of you... My pillow tutorial hasn't been up, and that's just because work was nuts this week. I didn't get it edited at all. Um, so I'm working on that this afternoon. The other thing is the stitch in hand tutorial. 
I'm thinking I might like to try to do that live, like do a, a stitch along or a stitch with me live. How would you guys feel about that? Would you like to do that where um, I set my cameras up and I show you how to stitch in hand live and show you the two over two or one over one and we just do some stitching and chatting? Um, let me know in the comments. I think that I might uh, try that if you're interested. If you'd rather just be a straight tutorial, I could do that as well or I could do both. Um, but let me know down in the chat. Okay, that's it, you guys, for questions this week. Next, we have cross stitch finishes. So they're not FFOs, they're just finishes. If you follow me on Instagram, you probably saw one of them. So I stitched the Primrose Cottage, United We Stand. So I was working on this last week and I was close to being finished. And I finished it. I did not get my little pillows made, but I will I should have those made by next week. I actually worked on something else sewing-wise, so I'm going to get back to these soon. But I love it. Isn't it cute? So I'll have three little pillows. I'm hoping I just... They literally take no time at all, so I'm hoping I get that done today. Let me see where I want to stick everything. My next finish is the highly anticipated... Hive Rules by Primrose Cottage Stitches. And you guys, I'm so tickled every time one of you either uh, comments here and tells me that you're stitching it too, or I've had several of you comment over on Instagram telling me you're, you're stitching it or showing me that you started. I love that. Keep that coming. I absolutely love it. So here is, I don't even know if I can back, yeah, maybe I can back up enough. Here is my hive rules all finished. I think I'm going to finish it myself. I haven't decided. I may take it and see about getting it finished and framed. I don't know, you guys. I haven't decided. But I literally, so I stitched all that bottom part, the love banner, the bee loved, and the bee. And that's why I'm saying I felt bad because I didn't get too very many of my projects. But this was a lot of stitching. This whole section here was a lot, so I need to be gentler on myself. I got all of that done. I got all of that little United We Stand. I still had like the a little more than half of the border and the word stand to do, and that didn't take me that long, but still, I love this Hive Rules. I can't, I'm really excited to stitch the other. Um, I already have the one little pillow, but to stitch the other charts from Primrose Cottage with the bees. <coughs> excuse me sorry um the that's it for my cross stitch finishes the only whip I have this week I have lots of whips ongoing um I guess we finished a couple of them but the only other one that I worked on this week is the shine on sampler so this is the, one of my questions I received about the cross stitch pattern that you can get in here well, let me find it. So, of course, this is a quilt book, but this is the cross stitch sampler that matches the quilt. And then they had it framed really cute over here. I am going to have mine framed for my craft room. And um, I did make some pretty good progress on that. Last week I did the B, which was so much work. And then, of course, the house... Here's, here's what I've got so far. I did the house right next to the B and then I did all of this right here. I also did that. So I did the house. I, I do still have like three windows <laughs> to stitch in white on the house. But I felt like that was pretty good progress. Again, that was a lot of little stitches. This was a lot of color change. Um, and But I'm just clicking right along. And that's it for whips. I think finishing my hive rules, that was my big, big finish this week. And of course, then finishing that fi final little postage image. Um, so that is it for that. Um, I kind of already covered stitch along. That was the only other thing I had on here I wanted to mention. 
and all I have on there is that I will talk more about that either next week or the week after and kind of tell you what I'm going to stitch and give you all the information and how I'm going to break up the chart. And if you guys want to join me, awesome. I'll set up a Facebook group and all of that. Um, so stay tuned. Haul. So I did have a little haul. First up. And I don't know where my Letters to Santa PDF went, but I did get my Letters to Santa um, Weeks Dye Works Fancy Floss Pack from Fat Quarter Shop. This finally came. This is going to be a stitch along with Fat Quarter Shop that I'm participating in in July. Brody, why are you making so much noise? Both dogs are in here now. Um, so this came and I will link to this in case you're interested. I know several of you have told me that you're going to be stitching it too. That's so exciting. This is going to be a new start this week. My month to month from Stitching with the Housewives came. Let's take the pattern out so you can see it better. It comes with, I signed up for the year um, from Fat Quarter Shop. So I am for sure going to stitch the big. I know I'm going to make it into a little pillow that I make a pillow form for that I can switch out every month and just stitch this I don't know yet if I'll stitch the small or not, but I am going to for sure do this because I like the idea of switching it out every month. I think it's so super cute. So I signed up through Fat Quarter Shop. I, got, I get the pattern and the floss. I don't know if you can sign up anymore for this one. You probably would have to buy it individually. Um, but I, maybe you can sign up in the future or be notified. I don't know how that works for sure. But you can buy the pattern at any time. So it, I just signed up to get it each month. So you'll be seeing me stitch these all year long. And let me tuck that back in here. Um, oh, I forgot one thing. Hold, please. Okay, I'm back. Um, I purchased this pattern it is a downloadable pattern from Cherry Hill Stitchery, but I did order it through Fat Quarter Shop because they do uh, sell their downloadables there and I was getting some other things. I loved it. I like this little sweet summer with the watermelon. I think this probably wouldn't take that long to stitch. I think it's so cute. I love the Buffalo Check fabric um, that this is finished on. So I purchased this and I'm going to stitch this up. I'm probably going to work on kitting it, kit it up. I don't think that would be a very long stitch. So that is also some of my haul. And then my other haul is some fig tree fabric for backing. And that's important because I'm going to show you a quilt that I finished up. So this is kind of a neutral. I'm going to show you what this goes with. But um, I did purchase that from that quarter shop. So I think that's it for haul. Let's go on to quilting. Uh, quilting this week. So I know I've been working on the Riley Blake and Moda Blockhead stitch alongs and I have not had a lot to share as well as the Heartfelt stitch along. Didn't work on any of those blocks this week and I was really beating myself up and I was like, well, maybe just delay putting your video up and hurry and do some blocks. No, I'm not gonna do that. Um, Something I was doing because both, well, the Riley Blake is going to be at the finishing stages where like I can get it sent off to the quilter soon. So that'll be my next priority. I had some quilts that were in progress that needed backings pieced together um, or the quilt top finished, like it was close and it needed to be finished. I wanna get those shipped off and out of my room. Um, I've had a couple of little messes in here and I thought this is silly. Get those finished. I have such a hard time. Like I always want to start. Finish them. Finish them, get them sent off, and then when they get back you can put the binding on and you'll have a finished quilt. So that is what I worked on this week and I decided give yourself, Nicole, give yourself some grace. It's totally fine that you didn't work on your blocks. And now I'm going to feel a lot less guilty about working on my blocks because I did kind of clean up two of these long standing projects. So the first one I know I shared with you guys in my first floss tube. I wish this was in color, but I can no longer print it in color even though it was a PDF. I'm having a hard time through Fig Tree getting, being able to reprint it. I printed this when I only had a black and white printer and since then I got a color printer, 
but it's seasonal patchwork. Um, I did the Americana one or the patriotic one. There's a Christmas and also a fall pumpkin. They're both super cute in black and white. It's not that showy, but you can buy this in paper or PDF. And for that, I know, as I mentioned, I shared this in my first floss two video and I said I needed to add borders and I was struggling with what color and all of that. And I literally went back and forth so many times. Let me figure out which way this goes. Okay, so this is a ton of thimble blossom, or not thimble blossoms, Bonnie and Camille fabric. So I think this is all Bonnie and Camille fabric, but it's a fig tree pattern. And you can see it's got lots of, it's very beachy, but it's different beachy than my other patriotic quilt. It has more of the aqua in it. And several of you said, do an aqua border. And I was kept trying to do red. And I think that's probably why I've let it sit so long because the rest of this has been pieced for a year, at least, uh, maybe a little over. And ultimately I decided I have this blue text from Bonnie and Camille. It is in the center of my little star block. I had enough, just barely enough to do my borders. And I think, I think it's perfect. I don't know what you guys think. Let me know, but I actually really love it. I think that that was definitely the right way to go. Maybe I'll stand up so you can see it better. That worked better when I showed you that with my Fats and Booze quilt. Hold on. So it's not a very big quilt, but I think it's perfect like for decoration. So that is that. I will hold that nicer here in a minute. I pieced together my backing. So for my backing, again, I really didn't wanna buy anything. I thought about buying something and I ultimately didn't. And see this little floral that I have in here? I actually had a couple, I'm trying to think how many yards I had. It wasn't quite enough. So I did piece my backing together. And I actually did this last night. Yep. And I just pieced in a couple more blocks. So I actually went ahead and pieced a couple more blocks. I don't know if you can see or not, but I put a little quilt label in here um, as, as the little border of this piece of that flag. But I had all of those scraps that I used for piecing the quilt still in my scrap bins. And so I simply just kind of did a couple um, here and that's my backing. I'm gonna send this off to Caitlin at Knot and Thread this week. It's really going to bother me not to fold this up. I guess I can do it as soon as we're done with the video. So that's the first thing I worked on. It was a little bit of work to kind of figure out how to make it work. Oh, and then before I put the border on, I was still contemplating the color of the border and I had it laid out on my table. I had everything off the table and I had it laid out. I saw where there were two patterns, the same pattern right next to each other and it wasn't supposed to be that way. So I actually kind of took my seam ripper and made a little hole in the middle of my quilt and flipped the strip and then re-pieced it back in. So that took a minute too, but I'm so glad I caught that. Um, glad I laid it out and looked at it really well. So that is finished. I'm going to get that sent off and when it comes back, I'll show you the finished quilt. The other quilt I worked on. So in January, Fig Tree did a quilt along. Um, it was the... Winter Walk in the Woods. This is what the finished quilt along pattern looks like. And I was working along with each week. I think it was like maybe a six week quilt along and I was doing so good. And then my knee injury happened and I completely lost steam. And then I did try to work a little bit on it. And it's been in strips, like the tree strips forever. And I'm gonna have to get up and show you this one too. There's no way. This one's gonna be, is a huge quilt. And I do still have one border left to put on it, but this is what mine looks like. And I love it. I know it's gonna be super hard to see. When I get it back, I'll share a whole, a whole photo of it. But it's got these great trees and all like the little stars or snowflakes in it. It's very light. It's kind of more of a, 
hate to say beachy, but not beachy, but the more faded light colors. So lots of white on white prints, um, like you could see in the trees, white on whites or the light brown on white. And so that's what I bought. This is my backing and I think it'll be really beautiful. So I'm super excited. I'm going to sew on the last outer blue border here. I'm going to get a little label uh, pieced into the backing, which I have plenty of backing, it won't be, it, so it won't be the issue that I had with my other quilt. Um, I'm going to piece that in, and I'm going to send both of these off to Knot and Thread this week. So I'm really, really excited about this. I know it's not even close to winter time, but this is a huge, huge uh, weight off of my shoulders because I started this and I loved it and I was working on it and working away and then I just kind of lost steam and I it's a lot of the same colors like it's not one of those quilts that has tons of different colors so you really know what goes where it was a lot of strips cut different lengths because it's a lot of borders which I don't really love I love the look of borders but I don't love sewing them on and um but it hasn't been bad. It hasn't been bad at all. But all those borders, I did have like little alphabets on each of them to let me know. And I dropped the design board. They scattered. I had no idea. I had to go back through. And of course, I didn't do it right at the moment because um, I didn't drop it right when I cut them. I dropped it later. Um, I had to go through and figure out what was what. And it was such a pain. So I took some time this week. I figured it all out. And I started sewing and I finished the quilt top. It went together much quicker than I thought. I'll sew those final borders on and we're good to go. Um, I do want to talk about a couple of things that I'm going to start sewing. Camille at uh, Thimble from Bonnie and Camille or Camille now because her mom retired. Um, has her own pattern company called Thimble Blossoms. And I saw on her Instagram, she's gonna do a swoon. I should have brought it up to show you. That's another thing I should bring up. Uh, she's going to do a swoon quilt along. And she has several different swoon patterns. Years ago, I stitched her first swoon pattern. I sewed it and quilted it. And it's one of my favorite quilts I've ever done. I'll bring, it's in the basement on the quilt rack. I'll bring it up to show next week. But I'm going to do her, you can do any of her swoon patterns. She's got like minis, um, her regular swoon. There's like a big swoon. There's like a really simple swoon that's like a big one. All kinds of different swoon patterns. I will link to those down in the description just so you can check them all out in case you quilt and you want to quilt along. I'm going to do swoon 16. I think, I think I'm going to do mine all. It's probably going to be a lot like this, but maybe not as much cream, like blues and navies. Um, my oldest has really, he's kind of insinuated he'd really like to have a quilt from me. And I've been trying to figure out um, something to do. And I think this could be really great in more muted tones. So I think I'm going to do this for him for Christmas. And that brings me to the other quilt gift I'm going to do. I know I mentioned it last week that um, the Merry Little Christmas bundle I got and I said I was waiting for the yardage to come in sh into stock the, for the wovens. I ordered all of the fabric I need to make two of these. And this is called Alpine. This is also a Thimble Blossoms pattern. And I'm making two because I want one. And I'm making one for my daughter. And I'm making it just like this. She kind of decorated uh, for the first year that she went full out decorating. Has her own apartment and everything in green. And uh, I think that this would match her decor and stuff. And so my kids are, my older two kids are both getting quilts for Christmas. And I think that's what I'm going to do. I haven't fully decided on the swoon, but for sure I've decided on this. And so, um, yeah, I am kind of excited to, I need to get both of those started. The swoon quilt along is in July. I think it might go just a little into August, which is perfect at for sewing, quilting, and you can work at your own pace. There's no set 
super, super set schedule. Um, but I will link to her post about it and I will link to her patterns in case you're interested. It looks intimidating. It literally has been one of, was one of my favorite quilts I ever did. It really taught me a lot. And so I highly recommend it. And I'll bring my, my swoon quilt to show you because I really mixed and matched a whole bunch of different fabrics. I was really proud of myself. <laughs> um, but I did that one years ago. I would say 2014 or 15. So it's been a little bit. Um, and I'm excited. I, I have had the swoon 16 pattern for a while. And I think this will be a great opportunity to sew it up. So I wanted to talk about a couple of those things that I'm going to work on. I'm going to work on finishing up my Riley Blake quilt so I can get show you hopefully the quilt top next week. Get caught up on Moda Blockheads and the Heartfelt Stitch Along. I'd like to get caught up on both of those before I start anything new, but we'll see. Um, and I guess that's about it. Now, I decided not to do giveaways today, and that is because I am going to do two really fun giveaways next week. I'm going to do a cross stitch giveaway and a quilt giveaway. Um, I haven't decided. I'll, I'll know bef soon. I'll probably know today because I need to get it ordered. I ended up ordering the Liberty box from Fat Quarter Shop. And I ordered two of them. I ordered one to give away. So um, I'm going to give one of those away. It's really cute. Um, it does have like a needle minder in it. So if you quilt and cross stitch, it has a really cute fabric bundle. It has a darling, darling pattern. I want to make the pattern. I don't know if I'll use the fabric bundle or not. I may just give that away as an extra. But um, that I'm kind of doing two bigger giveaways next week. So there'll be a, a cross stitch type giveaway and then there will be a quilty giveaway in next week's video. Um, I only had one person not notify or get in touch with me so I will list you down below Amy Myers won this Shannon Christine pattern and I haven't heard from you so please email me at the email down below so I can get this mailed off to you I've mailed the rest of the winners or emailed the gift certificate I did that uh, right away so um, I just have one if I don't hear from you before next week's floss tube I will be including that and or picking a new winner actually I'll probably just pick a new winner from the original post so um keep that in mind I'm, I don't want it to be outstanding forever and I can't chase you down so definitely contact me if you won that it's Amy Myers M-Y-E-R-S um I think that's it you guys wow I Hope everyone has had some stitchy time. You can kind of see Brody, my other, my little old man dog. He's over there in the corner licking his feet. Brody, what do you want? <laughs> um, he's tiny. Um, but I hope everyone has some good stitching time, quilting time, card making time. Whatever the case may be, thank you for spending some of your time with me. I truly appreciate it. I love reading your comments every week, so definitely keep them coming. If you have questions, definitely drop me a note. Um, I am work going to be working on some stitch along details, so we I will have that coming up soon. Um, other than that, I hope everyone has a great week till we visit again, and I will see you soon. Bye. If you enjoyed this video, please subscribe to my channel, hit that like button, and don't forget to click the notification bell to always be notified when I have a new floss tube or sewing video. Thank you so much for joining me today, and we'll see you next time.